years later, Victoria managed to build a life for herself with a loving husband and children and work that she loved. Years later, when Victor Lord was old and lay dying in a hospital bed, he reached out to Vicky, calling for his princess to come to him. But he didn't get his princess. What he got was a very angry altar named Tori, who was ready to face the truth head on. She was going to protect Vicky by solving the problem once and for all. She smothered him. Tori smothered Victor Lord and then disappeared for almost two decades. The only reason why she came back was because once again she had to deal with the truth head on. She exposed to Vicky what her father had done to her because it was time and Vicky was strong enough. And Tori, as a part of Vicky, understood that. Is Vicky dangerous? Tori did try to burn down the banner building. Tori did burn down the Lord Estate Lancer. She waited until she thought it was empty and then she set it on fire. And while Lancer burned, Jessica, Vicky's daughter, was upstairs. She'd come back to get something on her way to a party. Tori heard Jessica's cries for help, but it was Vicky who broke free from Tori and saved her daughter. And that was even before therapy, even before Vicky had control, before Vicky even knew there were ulcers, she rose up to save her child. And I submit to this court that the exact same thing would happen in any situation where the ulcers were going to harm someone. Vicky would not allow it. She didn't allow it. Tori, as, as Vicky testified, is asleep. And she will remain asleep because all the secrets are out. The other altars are subservient to Vicky, the dominant personality, who grows stronger every day. Does Vicky need therapy? Of course. Will this therapy last for a long time? Undoubtedly. Is she committed to getting that therapy? 100%. Is Vicky dangerous? No. Not to a single living soul, including herself. Your Honor, Mrs. Carpenter has been robbed of her childhood. She's been robbed of her youth. Is it really in the interest of justice, in the interest of this community, to rob her of her future, too? Please don't take her away from her friends who truly cherish her. Don't take her from her family, her children who love her and need her still. Don't make Victor Lord's grandchildren suffer for what he did to a seven-year-old little girl. can, Mrs. Carpenter. Um, only, I want you to remember that you are still under oath. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, uh, I just want to apologize for losing control earlier. I swear to you, it was not because an altar was trying to emerge. It was as if all the sorrow that is in me all the sorrow that I held in inside me. My whole life was suddenly trying to come out. And I wasn't just crying for myself. I was crying for my daughter, my youngest child, Jessica. She needs her mother. You see, we've lost a great deal of time together already. And this is a very important time in her life. Your Honor, I swear to you, if I thought that I was any kind of a threat to anybody, if 
if I thought there was even the remotest possibility that I could hurt someone. I myself would insist that I be locked away because I couldn't bear it. But I truly believe that the battle has been won. Now, I'm really the only one who could know completely what is going on in my head. So I have to ask you to trust me on that. The battle has been won. I won it. And I think I won it. Right here in this courtroom today. When all of a sudden I allowed all those feelings that had been in me for so long to come out. And then when I was listening to Nora. And I heard her say all the things that happened to me. And all the things that my altars did for me. Please let me go home. Please let me be with my family. Because they need me. And much more to the point. I need them. I need them to help me heal. Having considered the uh, testimony and heard statements provided by both sides, this court is ready to make its ruling. Mrs. Carpenter, you have been found not guilty by reason of insanity for the murder of your father, Victor Lord. The only question remaining is should you be released to the care of your family or sent to a mental institution for your own safety as well as the safety of others? The court does not claim to be infallible, but it does know its duty. Please rise. Mrs. Carpenter, the court is not faceless, nor is it heartless. The story of your childhood and the devastating effect it had on your life moved me deeply. No child should be subjected to abuse, physical, emotional, sexual, but to suffer at the hands of the very person that that child naturally turns to for love and protection, despicable. Dr. Hannon has demonstrated how your personality fragmented, each altar attempting to safeguard you in its own misguided way. You have not only my sympathy, you, Mrs. Carpenter, have my abiding respect for your courage. Nevertheless, in the course of your tortured life, not only in the distant past, but in the last year, you have engaged in dangerous activities with potentially lethal consequences. The same disorder which caused you to snuff out the life of your abuser has remained with you and caused you to wreak havoc on property, on yourself and on others. Therefore, I cannot in good conscience release you in your own custody. 